Please. Quiet on the floor, please. Quiet on the floor, please. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Can I please have your attention? At this time, please place all cell phones, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? Quiet on the floor, please. Thank you. Madam Public Advocate. All quiet in the chambers, please, as we cl close the doors. <laughs> Members, please have your seats. <laughs> All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Adams. Present. Amphrey Samuel. Ayala. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Chin. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Deutsch, Diaz, Drum, Espinal, Eugene, Gibson, Joni, Amphrey Samuel, thank you, Grudenchik, Deutsch, Shh. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Ayala. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Here. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Salamanca. Present. Levin. Here. Torres. Shh. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Valone. Van Bramer. Here. Diaz. Gibson. Um, Williams. Jaeger. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the invocation.
We recently celebrated the independence of Greece, and today our invocation will be delivered by the very Reverend Father Nectar, Nectarios Papaza Firopoulos, the Arch Mandrite and Dean of the St. Demetrius Cathedral at 30-11 30th Drive in the borough of Queens in Astoria. O oh Lord, the creator of all that exists and lover of mankind, you who are long-suffering, most merciful, most compassionate, who loves the just and are merciful to sinners, who grants forgiveness to those who hate and wrong us, we beseech you, O merciful one, to do good to those who do good. As we commemorate Greek Independence Day, let us remember those that have fought for our freedom and those that have given their life so that we may be free today. Remember, O Lord, your servants who have gathered here today in your holy name, especially our mayor and all the city council members and our public advocate who represent our great city of New York. Let us give thanks for being fortunate to live in this great country in the United States of America, a nation that has fought to provide freedom to all its citizens. We are also grateful to our ancestors of the Greek Republic who introduced democracy and liberty for all, as well as our ancestor region, Macedonia. Let your countenance shine upon them, grant eternal rest to those who are now departed from this world as a result of their struggle in the name of freedom. Remember, O oh Lord, those who still struggle in the name of freedom and are suffering in captivity. Lastly, we beseech you, O oh Lord, to enlighten our mind with the light of your knowledge and to guide us in the way of your commandments to return this fallen world to its original state of perfection. We ask this, O oh Lord, in your name, for your name is holy now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And Father, please excuse me for mispronouncing your name. And a motion to spread the invocation. Council Member Constantinidis, quiet in the chambers, please. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I move to spread the invocation to the entire chamber. Just a little bit about uh, the very Reverend Father Nectarios, who grew up in Astoria. Excuse me, Council Member. May we have quiet in the chambers and please give respect to the Council Member who's speaking. Shh. Apologize. Oh, no problem. Uh, the very Reverend Father Nectarios grew up in Astoria. Uh, he attended college in New York City at Polytechnic University, where he received his bachelor's and master's degree. Upon finishing his theological studies, he went to Greece, where he was ordained a, beacon, a deacon and then a priest six years ago. Father Nectarios returned back to New York to become dean of the community of St. Demetrius Cathedral of Astoria. Uh, St. Demetrius, the Greek Orthodox Church of Astoria, was founded in 1927 by a small group of immigrants. In 1937, their church was erected. The Greek community has continued to grow in Astoria rapidly, and the first Greek-American parochial school in Queens opened its doors in 1957. The annexed church of, of St. Catherine and George was completed in 1972. Today, it is the biggest Greek Orthodox community in the United States, and St. Demetrius Parochial School is the largest operating Greek-American school outside of Greece with classes from pre-K to 12th grade. I'm proud that Father Nectarios can be here today, uh, and this is the church that I was baptized in, um, so I thank you, and it was wonderful to be on Fifth Avenue celebrating Greek Independence Day on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the blessing. Adoption of minutes. Council Member Koslowitz. I move to adopt the minutes. So, so moved. Messages and papers from the mayor. M39, submitting Alan P. Capelli for appointment to the Planning Commission. Uh, rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered M40, Michael M. McSweeney for reappointment as city clerk and clerk of the council. Very happily, rules, privileges, and elections. But yeah, okay. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M41, Sidewalk Cafe. Uh, roll call, I'd ask for a roll call vote on today's land use call-up calendar. Quiet in the chambers, please. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Aye. Eugene. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Gorenchik. Aye. 
Holden, Kalos, King, Ku, Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye, and congratulations to Michael McSweeney. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Hold on. Moya. Aye, and congratulations to Brother McSweeney. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye, and congratulations to Mr. McSweeney. Thanks. Reynoso. Richards. On behalf of my wife, after seven years of marriage, I happily vote aye on uh, Michael McSweeney. Thank you for, for signing that certificate. We're still kicking. Thank you. I vote aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. With congratulations to Mr. McSweeney, I vote aye. Ulrich. Mike, you signed my certificate. Didn't work out too well for me, but I love you anyway. <laughs> I'm going to vote for you anyway. I love you. I vote aye. <laughs> Valone. I and all, and 25th anniversary coming up, so thank you. <laughs> Van Bramer. With pride in the hearts of every Woodsider, uh, I proudly vote for our native son, Mike McSweeney, yes on all. Williams. My mother's hoping you might sign mine one day. We'll see. Congrats. I vote aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Yes. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and congratulations, Mike McSweeney. Uh, quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker. Speaker. Corey, quiet in the chambers, Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to begin by honoring some of New York City's icons who we recently lost. The council lost one of its own, former council member John Gangemi, having previously served as a council member for the 43rd District in Brooklyn. John was an outstanding public servant who cared for his community for many decades. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family, friends, and former colleagues. Another tragedy struck. Another tragedy in Brooklyn occurred earlier this month when David Bakel, a prominent lawyer fighting for LGBT and environmental rights, took his own life in Prospect Park. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family, friends, and his former colleagues at Lambda Legal. Also, let us honor the memory of Dallas police officer Rogelio Santander, who died after getting shot while responding to an incident at Home Depot today. Our prayers and thoughts are with Officer Santander's family and friends. Let us take a moment of silence if folks could please rise. Eyes. Thank you very much. Uh, we have some very special guests up in the balcony today. If everyone could please welcome someone who we've never seen his name in the paper before, Doug Musio and his class from the CUNY Macaulay Honors College. We give them a nice round of applause. Welcome. Uh, the council is very, very proud to reappoint our city clerk, Mike McSweeney. And before I turn it over to someone to speak about uh, Mike, 
I want to say that besides all the stuff that people don't see day in and day out, the responsibilities by our city charter that the city clerk does, a lot of stuff that most folks don't realize but that are important to the city of New York, there's one very proud moment that I can think of, and I'm sure Councilman Van Bramer is going to talk about this in a very personal way, that in June of 2011, when marriage equality passed and marriage became possible in July, one of the few individuals, not few, one of the main individuals in the city who stepped up on that first day that marriage was allowed and spent countless hour after countless hour helping LGBT couples who had been denied the ability to marry their life partner and spouse for decades was Michael McSweeney. And he ensured that his staff and that the resources were there so that every single person that showed up at the city clerk's office were welcomed, were celebrated, were treated with respect and dignity, and his entire staff had a smile on their face, and he was marrying couple after couple after couple that day with the biggest smile on his face, emanating affection and love to folks who were experiencing one of the most special moments of their entire life. And that goes to speak to the type of man that Michael McSweeney is, the type of service that he has committed to our city for years and decades. And so I am extremely proud that Michael McSweeney is going to be reappointed city clerk today. And I want to turn it over to Council Member Jimmy Van Bramer, who is, uh, Mike is a constituent of his, to say a few words about a great public servant and our friend. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for uh, allowing me to speak on behalf of all Woodsiders, uh, everyone in Queens, uh, and really all of New York City. <clears throat> Many folks here know Mike, and they know of his long career, his distinguished career in public service uh, in Queens, uh, whether it's working for Congressman Crowley, uh, making sure that Woodside on the move, a great civic organization is strong, uh, or so many of the other things that he's done. Uh, but everyone should know uh, that Mike McSweeney, as our city clerk, helped make history in the city of New York, in the state of New York, uh, in this nation by making sure that he was there present at those critical moments when the very first same-sex couples uh, lined up to get married, performing the very first uh, an historic wedding between two uh, senior lesbians in our community. Um, but I wanted to tell a, a short but very powerful story uh, of Mike's goodness, and, and that is the story of two Woodsiders, uh, middle-aged men who had been together for 30 years before they were able to get married. And uh, Mike, after I called him, married those Woodsiders, Lou Rispoli and Daniel Lawson, uh, in 2011. Uh, but shortly after, Lou was attacked in a tragic, tragic um, murder. Uh, he was left for dead on the streets. And when he got to the hospital, he was already uh, brain dead. And his partner of, uh, and now husband of over 30 years, uh, Daniel, was left with the decision of whether or not uh, to take him off life support. As you can imagine, it was really tragic. Ultimately, Danielle made the decision to take Lou off of life support. But the hospital asked him for proof that they were married and asked for the wedding certificate. They could not find the wedding certificate. Obviously, it was a very traumatic time. They called me from the hospital. The only person I could think to call was Mike McSweeney. And I said, Mike, they need the wedding certificate to prove they're married. Uh, I don't know if you can help. Without missing a beat, on a Saturday morning, Mike McSweeney said, Jimmy, I got this. Don't worry about it. He left his home in Woodside, went all the way down to Lower Manhattan, made a photocopy, printed out another copy of the wedding certificate, and then physically brought it to me in Sunnyside, Queens. Uh, I was then able to bring it to the hospital. Uh, Danielle was able to take Lou off of life support, and Lou died shortly thereafter. I will never forget Mike McSweeney's uh, unbelievable act of kindness and compassion. 
making sure that the two men he married could also be at peace with one of their deaths. Uh, it is an unusual act of kindness, of generosity, uh, and Mike did it because he knew they needed it. He knew it was the right thing to do. So Mike, all of the things that you've done for our city are part of why you are being unanimously reelected to this position. But I want this story to be known because everybody should know the decency and the goodness in your heart and how many people would rise to that level it called on in that moment. So Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you join me, I'm sure all of us uh, join me in thanking Mike McSweeney, an unusually kind and decent public servant. Thank you, Mike, on behalf of everyone in Woodside, everyone in Queens, but most especially Lou Rispoli and Daniel Lawson. Thank you. It was beautiful. You're a good man, Mike McSweeney. You're a good man, as they said in Charlie Brown. Jumping into our docket for the day, the council will vote on four land use items, uh, one on West 108th Street. The council will vote on a series of actions to facilitate a project will include senior housing, supportive housing, a transitional shelter, and affordable housing. Altogether, this project will produce <clears throat> close to 400 units of affordable housing. This application is in Councilmember Mark Levine's district. There's a Park Haven rezoning. The council will vote to rezone a site at St. Anne's Avenue and East 142nd Street to produce approximately 170 units of affordable housing and an affordable grocery store. This project is in Council Member Diana Ayala's district. Next, there's a project at 500 West 174th Street. The council will vote on an Article 11 tax exemption to preserve 27 units of housing in Council Member Idanis Rodriguez's district. And lastly, a project at uh, 721 uh, Van Sicklin. It's the council will vote on an Article 11 tax exemption to preserve 37 units of housing in Council Member Inez Barron's district. I want to thank the staff who worked on all these projects, Jeff Yoon, James Lloyd, Brian Paul, Amy Levitan, and Julie Lubin, all from the council's land use division. Next, the council will vote on some very important legislation. First, we're going to vote on introduction 858, sponsored by Councilmember and Women's Committee Chair Helen Rosenthal. Uh, these bills are going to make some amendments to two recently passed legislative bills. Introduction 612A for the year of 2018 and introduction 664A for the year of 2018. The bill we're voting on is going to include some technical amendments to those two bills which we passed recently. These amendments clarify that interactive training on anti-sexual harassment practices shall be determined by the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, DCAS, instead of the Human Rights Commission. We determined they were the better agency to make the call on what is deemed and how we clarify interactive training. The other amendment is gonna further clarify that climate surveys would be available to all agencies for dissemination to agency employees on or before September 30th of this year, 2018. So this bill cleans up those two parts of the package of bills we passed at the last uh, stated meeting. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Malcolm Butehorn, Brenda McKinney, who also just passed the New York Bar. So congratulations to Brenda. Aminta Kilowan, Andrea Vasquez, Tirza Nasser, and Daniel Krupp, thank you to all of you. Uh, moving on, we are gonna vote on some environmental protection bills in a package implementing wind power and energy efficiency measures. Uh, though we just celebrated Earth Day, we should always be cognizant of our environment 
and how we can do our part to protect Mother Nature. With this environmental protection package, the Council serves as a model for other municipalities to take action in saving our planet at a time when we face rapid climate change. I would like to thank Environmental Protection Committee Chair Costa Constantinides for his hard work. He was all over the place for Earth Week, and he's going to speak in a moment on uh, his bills. My bill, Introduction 598A, is going to require that every city-owned building will be completely powered by green energy sources by 2050. Every building will have to be completely powered by green energy sources. This bill would also require that the Commissioner of Citywide Administrative Services uh, to report uh, concerning the implementation of this requirement every 10 years. Chair Constantinides has two bills up for vote today. Introduction 48A would require each long-term sustainability plan required by the Charter to contain a wind resource assessment that would identify and map the areas of the city where wind resources are available for the effective utilization of a wind turbine. Introduction 50A would authorize the installation of small wind turbines designed to generate electricity along with supporting structures. This would cover design standards, wind speed, brakes and locks, visual appearance, signal interference, noise, shadow, and setbacks. And next, uh, we, have we have introduction 96A, sponsored by Councilmember Peter Koo, which would allow residential cooperatives to file a single consolidated energy efficiency report where the cooperative covers multiple buildings on different tax block numbers. Lastly, we have resolution, resolution 176, sponsored by Councilmember Donovan Richards, which expresses support for New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo's commitment to and facilitation of the development of large scale offshore wind projects by 2030. I want to thank the staff who worked on this package of environmental bills, Samara Swanson, Megan Chen, Nadia Johnson, Jose Condi, Smita Deshmukh, and Ed Atkin. Now that completes the highlights of our docket, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. <clears throat> Discussion of general orders? Seeing none, reporter special. Oh, Council, Council Member Costantinides. Please, no. I just want to briefly uh, thank you, uh, Madam Public Advocate. I just would like to thank the speaker uh, for his great environmental leadership and his bill um, what is setting the tone for what we should expect from all buildings in New York City uh, being uh, fully powered by renewable sources. Our bills today uh, help us walk the path of 80 by 50. Uh, you know, we want people to adopt these technologies as soon as possible, but we have to make it easier. Uh, too often when it comes to uh, special permits like currently exist for wind power, uh, residents don't want to deal with them. They see the path and they see it to be too arduous. So this legislation today, create, intro 48A, creates a wind resource map so residents can look to see if wind power is good for their buildings and they can make better informed decisions. Uh, intro 50A cuts red tape and moves away from special permits and bureaucratic hurdles and allows for basic regulations on how to ma maintain and remove turbines, how turbines should be removed, wind speeds they should withstand, how they should be locked in a hurricane, how large they can be, and so on. We know that averting climate change will take every effort and making it easier for us to walk the path of a green future is so important. So I want to thank the staff, uh, uh, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, Ed Atkin, uh, Samita, uh, our intern, Kent Williams, everyone at the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, including my, and my staff, uh, Nick Wazowski, my attorney. And I want to give a special uh, shout out to my communications director, Shahar Sharon, who's actually leaving me on Friday. Um, who has done great work for our office. She's been with me since the very beginning. She's been a hard worker, someone that has always served greatly the people of the City of New York, and I look forward to seeing her in her new role as a Communications Director for the League of Conservation Voters starting in May. So congratulations, Shahar, and thank you for your services. Thank you. Council Member Koo. Thank you, uh, Madam Public Advocate. I would like to thank Speaker Johnson and my colleagues for supporting intro 96, uh, 96A, a bill that would allow residential co-ops to consolidate their energy efficiency reports. In 2009, the city passed Local Law 87, which requires certain large buildings to audit their energy consumption and to submit energy efficiency reports. Those energy efficiency reports 
document any actions taken by the buildings uh, to come into compliance with the law. As we know, many residential co-ops have multiple buildings on different tax lots, and Local Law 87 requires each of them to submit separate reports with uh, separate deadlines. This uh, head hazard filing system creates an administrative nightmare where management companies are constantly scrambling to meet deadlines for multiple buildings. Allowing residential co-ops to consolidate their energy efficiency reports will significantly reduce this administrative burden for those well-intentioned properties looking for, to comply with Local Law 87. As residential co-ops are leading middle-class options for home ownership in many parts of the city, especially in Northeast Queens, this effort will streamline reporting and simplify paperwork for both the city and property owners. Ultimately, this will cut the red tape by making it easier for more buildings to come into compliance with the city's sustainability laws, which are so important in our modern and environmentally conscious cities. I would like to thank the speaker, Chair Konstantinidis, and his staff. I also like to thank Jeff Baker, Ed Atkin, uh, Samir Wa Swanson, Nadia Johnson, John Sosa, Brandon McKinney, and Maggie Chen. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on items on the general order calendar? Uh, Madam Public Advocate, I, I was remiss in one thing, which is we are losing an employee <coughs> at the council this Friday who has been a real superstar, and I am very sad to see him leave. Uh, we're losing Brian Crow, who has been a committee counsel here at the council, who's worked in a variety of areas, juvenile justice, criminal justice, almost everything related to Rikers Island, related to our criminal justice packages that were done under Speaker Mark Viverito. He has been an amazing committee counsel. Uh, he has been uh, involved in some of the most difficult issues uh, that we've tackled here during his time in the council. He is leaving this Friday. I am very sad to see him go. I did not want him to leave, but I am happy for him, and he is going to be working at Attorney General Eric Schneiderman's office. So I am really grateful for him that uh, he was able to do great work here, and now he's going to be doing great work for the state of New York. So I want to give Brian Crow a big round of applause. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Congratulations, Brian. Any other discussions? Seeing none, report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, intros 48A, 50A, 96A, and 598A, Earth Day package. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 52 through LU 57 on the next page, West 108th Street and Park Haven projects. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council in Section 197D of the New York City Charter. L, excuse me, LU 58 and Reso 315 and LU 59 and Reso 316, tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections, preconsidered M40 and Reso 317, approving the reappointment of Michael M. McSweeney, City Clerk and Clerk of the Council. Proudly coupled on general orders. <laughs> Report of the Committee on Women, pre-considered intro 858, anti-sexual harassment bill. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Laid over. LU 52 and Reso 318 through LU 57 and Reso 323, various applications. Coupled to general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Coupled to general orders, and at this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on all items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to call my colleagues' attention to LU 59 and Reso 316. It's in Article 11 for an HDFC in my community, not far from where I live, 721 Van Sicklin Avenue. And what this provision will do Will, it will be able to keep this property from going into a third party transfer. It will give them tax benefits. It will keep them regulated for the next 40 years. 
and it will allow those persons who live in this building who are share owners, shareholders, to not lose the equity that they have built over the years that they've lived there. So I want to thank all of those who worked so diligently to bring this uh, to this point. It was a battle at some instances, but we came to a great resolution, and I ask that all my colleagues will support this, and I vote aye on all. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Can I be excused to explain my vote? Yes. I just wanted to uh, echo all of my colleagues and saying congratulations to Mike McSweeney. Um, he is uh, a, public service, a, a public servant of the highest order. He's in this for the right reasons to help the people of the city of New York. He's a humble guy, and you know, we all love him. So congratulations, Mike. Carnegie. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. With my warmest congratulations to Mike McSweeney and congratulations to Brian Crow. Thank you so much for your incredible service. Looking forward to working with you. And I want to wish Brian continued success and thank him for helping me um, with all of the criminal justice work, specifically on the nursery program at Rikers Island. Deeply grateful for Brian and his service. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jonai. Gordenchik. Brief permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just want to, uh, uh, I will vote aye on all, Madam Public Advocate. I was going to congratulate Mr. McSweeney, uh, but I've known him for many decades, and I know him to be a very modest and humble individual. So instead, I'm going to congratulate my speaker, Corey Johnson, all the people in this room who are voting to extend his clerkship over the great New York City Council in the city of New York. And with that, I vote aye on all. Congratulations, Michael. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Uh, thank you to uh, Clerk McSweeney for swearing me in and even renewing my vows without charging me extra. I vote aye on all. <laughs> Ku. I also want to congratulate uh, Michael Sweeney for being uh, reappointed to, as our uh, city clerk. Uh, he has done uh, two, my, both of my children's marriages. Uh, I'm honored to have him witness uh, my children's marriages. Thank you, Michael. And I vote aye on all. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Levine. Permission to briefly explain my vote, Madam Public Advocate? Yes. I am pleased that we'll be voting today on land use item 52, which would allow for creation of 281 units of 100% affordable senior supportive and family housing on 108th Street between Columbus and Amsterdam Avenue, a project which will bring many benefits to the broader community. Uh, included in the package is replacement of a worn out artificial turf athletic field across the street at MS 54, a partial renovation of nearby playground, a VLIS playground, a creation of a new community health clinic, parking space for the volunteer Central Park Ambulance Corps, and many, many other benefits to the surrounding community. And I'm pleased to have been able to consult with all stakeholders from all sides over the last year and a half as a consensus emerged in, in my district about the importance of this project. And I want to specifically thank the great nonprofit developer, the West Side Federation for Senior and Supportive Housing, Wishfish, whose president, I believe, is here with us in the balcony, Shelley Fine, who's provided great leadership on this project, together with the whole agency. And I'm grateful for the incredible staff in the Land Use Division who did so much work on this very complicated project, including Raju Mann, Amy Levitin, Julie Lubin, Jeff Ewan, and my own chief of staff, Aya Keefe, who did her usual brilliant work on this project. Thank you very much. I will be voting aye on all. Levin. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I, I want to vote aye on all, but I was remiss earlier in not uh, congratulating my friend Mike McSweeney. It, next week, Mike, it'll be three years, and so far, so good with, with uh, <laughs> my household. So. Thanks. Thank you so much uh, for all, all that you've done uh, for our city, and, and uh, I, I'm proud to vote aye on your reappointment, and aye on all. Thanks. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. 
Uh, I also want to pile on to the love fest for our incredible city clerk. I was there in that room, the first couple being married. Uh, I, was, I was an LGBT liaison for speaker Christine Quinn back then, and I watched you in action, Mike, and you never failed anyone. The stories you hear today are the stories of the past, but I can't wait for your next term, uh, your next chapter. There are a lot of things in the future that are going to require us all as public servants to follow your lead. Uh, you're going to leave some big shoes behind, but I'm really excited you're going to have another opportunity to continue to serve our incredible community. Um, I am not going to thank you for marrying me because I'm not yet married, but if you're available, <laughs> I might be calling you. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Miller. I vote aye, and I'd also like to congratulate our unassuming gentle giant, uh, Mike McSweeney. And Eric, he is batting about 999. Uh, so uh, with that bad and average, you're doing great. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Mike. Vote aye on all. Thank you. Moya. Aye on all. Perkins. Aye on all. Thank you. Powers. Aye on all, and I also want to congratulate Brian Crow on his, uh, his new job, and thank you for his service to the Criminal Justice Committee. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, Mike, I just want to say uh, thank you for coming out to Williamsburg in the French Bistro at 9 o'clock on a Saturday to get things done in, in our, um, and helping me out in finding time uh, to make sure I can remain a council member. And it's just uh, little things like that that you always did for a lot of people here that really speak to who you are as a person. So congratulations, well-deserved, uh, and I vote I on all. Thank you. Richards. I on all. Rivera. I on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. I congratulations, Mike. Rose. Mike, there's a lot of pressure on you with all these weddings, man. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming to Staten Island for, um, uh, and swearing me in on Staten Island, and I vote I on all. Congratulations, Mike. Rosenthal. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. McSweeney. We all appreciate what you do every day. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and I, too, would like to wish good luck to Brian Crow, who is an amazing legislative um, drafter and understands, I, I think his brilliance is born by the fact that he really understands the plight of people who will be on the receiving end of the legislation that we pass, and his heart drives, um, drives what's in there, and, and he's always been wise. Um, I appreciate him very much, congratulations. Councilmember Levine for uh, bringing in this affordable housing. And there was one other thing, Costa, congr oh, he, did he leave? I'm not gonna congratulate him if he left. He's here. Oh, he's here. Costa, congratulations on all the environmental legislation you bring to this city. Uh, it's really, we're so lucky to have you here. Thank you very much. I vote out and all. Thank you. Salamanca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, first, I want to congratulate uh, Mike McSweeney. Um, I also want to congratulate um, Councilmember Donis, Barron, and um, Mark, Lev Mark Levin on their projects, on their land use uh, projects. But most importantly, I want to congratulate Councilmember Diana Ayala. Uh, this project came to committees, um, this uh, Euler project, and it was not a right fit for her community. She stood up, she fought, and she ensured that they changed the MIH option two to MIH option one, and she also ensured that there were uh, units for low-income families at the 30% AMI level, and she set an example by allowing a 30% homeless set aside. So I congratulate you, Councilmember Ayala, Ivo Ayano. Thank you. Torres. Ayano. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. Valone. Aye on all. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Williams. Yeager. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my first, I'd like to congratulate uh, Councilmember Constantinidis, Councilmember Ku, for uh, extraordinarily wise pieces of legislation that this council is passing. Uh, it'll make it easier, cheaper, more efficient to go green, uh, to do well by our children uh, for the earth that we're borrowing from them. And I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to serve on the Environmental Protection Committee 
uh, under our chair and to uh, be a part of this. I will proudly vote aye on all. Uh, to our city clerk, um, uh, I've been involved in politics for a long time, but being sworn in for the first time, there's really nothing like it. It was three days before my term started. Uh, you were kind. Uh, I was not terrified, but uh, you put your arm around me and you told me I'm going to do okay. I don't know if I've done that yet. You'll let me know. Um, but I'm grateful for the way you treated me, my family, and I'm honored to cast my vote in favor of your reappointment. God bless. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Mario. Aye. Combo. I proudly vote aye, and I just want to celebrate Mr. McSweeney as well because um, being sworn in is probably the most memorable event in many of our lives. It's something that we share with our family, our friends, our constituents, and the photographs that we take are often so meaningful. And so to have you be a part of the most meaningful memory in many of our lives is so touching. And so today also gives us an opportunity to really explain when people say, who's that guy? We have an opportunity to explain a bit more about your history and the important work that you do in the city of New York. So thank you, and I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. Aye on all. Thank you. I too want to thank um, Michael McSweeney for marrying uh, five members of my staff. Thank you for accommodating them. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the revised land use call-up vote is 50 in the affirmative and zero negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committee as indicated on the agenda. Discussion of resolution, and the resolution is 176, and it reads as follows. A resolution in support of the governor of New York State in the commitment to, to and facilitation of the development of large-scale offshore wind projects by 2030. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all of those in favor say aye. Aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. General discussion beginning with Council Member Barron. Councilmember Barron, may I just say one thing before we turn it over to you? I was, again, remiss in uh, not acknowledging someone who has served this council for 28 years. 28 years on staff here at the New York City Council. Margaret Griffin from the Land Use Division is retiring. And she is someone who we don't see at committee hearings or we don't see here at the chamber, but who has dedicated herself for almost three decades in the land use division as an administrative assistant and helping make sure everything gets done, whether it be that the agendas are done for the subcommittee hearings, whether uh, the documents are being prepared appropriately on large or small land use projects. She has served this council impeccably and given almost three decades of her life to serve the city of New York. Uh, she is, always has a smile on her face whenever I drop by Raju's office or, a, or, or Julie's office. She is always there. She is friendly and welcoming and kind and wonderful. So I want us to give a big thank you to Margaret Griffin for 28 years of service to the New York City Council. Councilmember Barron. Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, just a brief Shh. statement Excuse regarding. Me. Sorry, Councilmember. Regarding the removal of the J. Marion Sims statue, I want to acknowledge the protests that were initiated in 2007, 11 years ago, by Viola Plummer, who was then Chief of Staff to then Councilmember Charles Barron. And I'm pleased to be a part of the coalition for the removal of the Dr. J. Marion Sims statue. Dr. J. Marion Sims' experimentations on enslaved African women and children were horrendous. His experimental surgical intrusions on black women and children were without their consent to their bodies being subjected to his tortuous probes. It is indicative, indicative of the institutionalized racist beliefs on which this country is founded. Monuments and memorials should serve as a tribute to honor those who have made significant contributions to society. 
These public monuments must certainly be evaluated in context. For Dr. Sims to have bought enslaved African women for the purpose of his horrific experiments and to not use anesthesia is revealing of the mindset, of his mindset, and of this country's willingness and complicitness in elevating this racist butcher. In his own words, he said he believed that Africans had specific physiological traits that allow them to have increased tolerance for pain, unquote. His actions are part of the pattern of America's history of dehumanizing African Americans as described in Harriet Washington's book, Medical Apartheid, Medical Experimentations on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. When Sims used these procedures on white women, he did use anesthesia. That Sims statue has been removed is an acknowledgment that Dr. Sims is not worthy of being honored. The inscription on the base of the statue should also be obliterated. I, have, I believe that the statue should have been put in some obscure storage, but since the statue is being moved to Greenwood Cemetery, I say let's finish the job and bury him there. And we can think of some prominent African women to put in that place. We can use Dr. Susan McKinney Stewart, who was uh, the first African-American doctor in New York State, and, or Dr. McQuinn Chin, another African-American woman who was significant in New York history. Thank you. Thank you. And Ka I want to add my congratulations to our city clerk, Mike McSweeney. Thank you so much. Thank you. Councilmember Cabrera. Thank you so much. Today, I'm introducing three very straight Forward pieces of legislation. These two bills in one resol seek to expand the voter franchise to eligible New Yorkers, increase transparency in reporting by agencies, and curtail the number of homeless families with children living in poorly maintained and privately owned buildings. Resol 307 calls on New York State to enact legislation to authorize same-day voter registration, allowing eligible New York City residents to register to vote and cast a ballot at the poll site on election day. Intro 828 will require the Department of Records and Information Services, which is currently mandated to receive and post all, all reports required by law or executive order on its website to list all required reports when they were last received and when they are next due. In addition, this bill will require a request for transmission to be sent to any agency that does not transmit a required report and require the posting of such requests on the website in lieu of the required report into such reports received. Lastly, intro 827 will prohibit additional homeless families with children from being temporarily housed in private buildings with more than five class seat housing maintenance code violation. Current home, homeless families with children in such buildings will be permitted to remain, but no additional families could be housed in such buildings until corrections have been certified by HPD. Thank you so much. Thank you. Council Member Rodriguez. Thank you. And I would like to encourage my colleagues to sign on three bills related to the taxi industry. I also would like to ask my colleagues to sign on intro 857 that will create a residential parking bill. And with this bill, we can reduce congestion, save time, and money. And as we know, many New Yorkers, they waste a lot of time looking for parking in their community. This residential parking system will be established in council districts where council, where council members and community boards express interest of such initiative. San Francisco and Boston created its residential parking system in the 1970s. Let's do it in New York City in 2018. A survey in 2013 conducted by CUNY NYU showed that the large majority of New Yorkers would like to see a residential parking system in our city, and I hope to keep working with my colleagues, especially Council Member uh, Steve Levin, who will be my co-prime in this bill, my other colleague also, Power, Mark Levine, and Helen Rosenter, that they also have similar initiative for the Northern Manhattan area. Council Member Moore, you know that he has shown interest for this initiative in his district, as also Constantin Eder, and my great friend also, Peter Balon. So I hope that we can continue addressing this issue. This is our time. 
to bring a residential parking system to our city of New York. Queremos establecer un sistema de parqueo donde los residentes de cada comunidad puedan tener pre preferencia para parquear su vehículo y no competir con aquellas personas que vienen de afuera. Thank you. Gracias. Council Member Williams. Thank you. Uh, I just want to call my colleagues' attention to a bill and two resolutions. The first one is commonly called uh, the Boss Bill, co-sponsored co by myself, Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, Helen Rosenthal, Chair of the Women's Committee, along with co-chairs of the Women's Caucus, Carolina Rivera and Margaret Chin, and Council Member Debbie Rose. The bill protects against employment discrimination on the basis of sexual and reproductive health decisions, which refers to any decision to receive services which are arranged for or offered are provided to individuals related to the reproductive system. It's a reintroduction. Hopefully we can have a hearing. Two resolutions, 313 applauds the U.S. Court of Appeals Second Circuit decision recognizing protections for LGBTQ TGNC employees from employment discrimination on the Title VII of the Civil Rights Act and denouncing Sessions DOJ trying to deny these protections. Resolution 314 calls on the state legislature to pass the Simon Prasad legislation, which would establish a center for research into firearm-related violence and a firearm research fund. Also, just want to say a thank you to the administration uh, for the formation of the Crisis Prevention and Response Task Force. Uh, many of us from the uh, council side last term, including uh, Andy Cohen, the Progressive Caucus, the BLAC, and myself requested this after Dwayne June was shot and killed in my district. I want to thank them as well as Council Member Richards, Council Member Ayala, uh, for requesting again this term after the death of uh, Saeed, and hopefully this task force will lead to the prevention of other EDP persons being killed. Um, lastly, just want to point out uh, that HUD Secretary Ben Carson, uh, who I've said occasionally uh, not only is in the sunken place, has created the sunken place, is proposing that subsidized tenants have to pay 35 percent of their gross income or 35 percent of their earnings. It approximately triples the requirement uh, currently being held, eliminating deductions for medical and child care costs when determining rent. It just again shows why it is so important for folks to focus on local elected officials. We are the ones that have to protect from the orange madness being sent down. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Cumbo. Thank you. I want to recognize the incredible work of Council Member Barron. She has shown that persistence, dedication, and a strong fight can make almost anything possible. And so to see Dr. Sims's sculpture to come down is a huge victory for people all over the world, particularly for African American women. And this shows that when we come together, when we fight, we're dedicated and we're persistent, incredible things can happen. I also stand today because today is Denim Day. And like many of you, we have worn um, denim with people and individuals and legislators all over the world uh, to recognize a court case where, unfortunately, a victim of rape, it was determined by the judge that she must have consented to it because of the fact that she was wearing tight jeans. And in an act of protest, legislators in Italy came to work that day all wearing jeans to show a sign of solidarity. And so today is denim day. I wear denim, and I look good in my denim. But no matter how good I look in my denim, it's not an invitation to catcall. It's not an invitation to touch. It's not an invitation to grope. And it's not an invitation for rape. It doesn't matter what you are wearing, where you are, whether it's in your workplace, your school campus, a park, a nightclub, no means no. And today, we as a city council continue to elevate that message. And through the recent package of legislation that we passed in terms of sexual harassment, um, we have made sure that we have sent the message loud and clear legislatively as well. So I thank all of the individuals all across the world who have worn denim today, who in spirit wore went denim today, and we must continue to raise this message and elevate those. Thank you. Thank you. Time's up. Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, I want to um, uh, speak for a moment on uh, intro uh, 3620, which is being sponsored by you, our public advocate, uh, and I'm happy to co-sponsor it um, regarding uh, on-site child care for city employees. Far too many New Yorkers don't have access to realistic child care options, and with the majority of families now in dual-income households, we are long overdue in the meaningful ways to address this issue. 
As you all know, I chair the General Welfare Committee and spend a lot of time working with advocates and the administration to expand child care resources for our city's residents, but it's not enough. Too many people are caught in the middle and forced to make an impossible choice between caring for their children or their livelihood. In a city as great as New York, I know that we can do better and we need to do better. Uh, so as you all also know, I am personally impacted by this issue. My wife and I have a wonderful daughter, Frances, and, uh, and e with, even with two of us taking care of her, it's a lot. Um, and not everyone has that. Uh, so it takes a village to raise a child. It takes family members, loved ones, and trusted adults to make sure that everyone uh, that everything that every, the children have everything that they need to grow up. On-site child care options would open the door for countless New Yorkers to raise their families in the way that is right for them, bringing 21st century solutions to address an increasingly expensive lack of options. So I'm proud to co-sponsor this legislation. I want to thank uh, our public advocate for introducing uh, this important bill. And then just on a, a, another note, I forgot to acknowledge that not only did uh, Mike McSweeney arrange our marriage, we were married by, the de by his deputy, um, but uh, this past year, he actually came out to Greenpoint on New Year's Eve, or the day before New Year's Eve, to swear me in on, on, you know, out on the sidewalk on Green Street with, uh, uh, with his uh, wonderful partner. And it was, uh, it was just a, another example of Mike going above and beyond. He also introduced me to E3 Live. So if any of you guys know about E3 Live, Mike's one of the biggest uh, advocates for E3 Live for healthy living. So with that, uh, I turn it back to you, Mr. Speaker. Councilmember Cornegy. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, today I'm proud to introduce three bills which I encourage all my colleagues to sign on to. The first will require an agency designation by the mayor to submit a zombie property report every other year to each member of the council detailing the vacant residential buildings and vacant lots located in each council district. Yeah. It's my belief that the information will empower individual members to identify opportunities for the development of affordable housing in their respective districts and remain actively engaged in encouraging such properties to be developed responsibly based on the unique needs of their respective districts. The second bill I'm introducing today will streamline the submission and review process for alternative automatic fire extinguishing systems, fire alarm systems, and fire protection plans by consolidating these processes under the fire department, saving money and time for small business owners. The consolidation of overlapping review and approval processes now performed by the Department of Buildings and the Fire Department is a part of City's Small Business First initiative. The proposed amendments to the Administrative Building, Mechanical, and Fire Codes further the goal of streamlining the approval process for these systems to save small business owners time and money and enable them to begin operating sooner. The new process will be less burdensome for the businesses without sacrificing important city oversight. Applications and plans for such systems will be filed with and subject to the approval of the FDNY. Finally, the third bill will require the administration to resurrect the Mayor's Office of Industrial and Manufacturing Businesses. The industrial sector remains a cornerstone of our city's economy, representing over 15 percent of private sector employment. In addition, manufacturing jobs represent an important pathway to the middle class with median wages of 50400 per year. I'm encouraged, I was encouraged two and a half years ago by the announcement of a 10-point action plan to modernize the city's industrial policy which was backed by more than $115 million in funding. I believe it's critical that there be an office dedicated to the complete implementation of this plan and the support of the industrial sector to ensure we make the zoning policies, workforce programming, and other incentives aimed at promoting industrial and manufacturing business work and effective as possible. With that, I thank you for listening and ask all of you to sign on to those three very important bills. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And our last speaker is Councilmember Kalos. Thank you, uh, Public Advocate James, for introducing uh, Bill 853 uh, in relation to providing on-site child care for city employees. I join with the, uh, my, my uh, father's ca uh, caucus uh, member, uh, Council Member uh, Levin, in uh, asking colleagues to please sign on. Uh, I think that this is something that uh, is for everyone in this body who is a parent, would like to be a parent, who represents parents. Uh, in addition, uh, some of you may have read, I've been working with uh, Council Member Espinal on the idea of reducing the number of plastic bottles in our waste stream. New York City contributes one billion plastic bottles a year uh, to the waste stream. And so uh, one idea would be to uh, limit their sale just from the city. Uh, at least uh, the city shouldn't purchase them here in the council. We don't use plastic bottles. We haven't since Speaker Quinn. 
uh, and we shouldn't use them in our parks, we shouldn't sell them in our parks, and uh, we figure if we can lead by example and do what San Francisco did, I know that when I went there and couldn't buy a water bottle, I got a reusable bottle and kept using it for the rest of my time there, and I still, won, still use one most of the time to this day. Uh, additionally, we have uh, other items inspired by uh, uh, Earth Day, including uh, requiring recycling bins in commercial locations, intro 843, uh, trying to attain a goal of zero waste and actually having it in the law, intro 844, which was supported by Sanitation Chair Antonio Reynoso, and uh, one for those who like looking up at the sky and dreaming, for those who might like astronomy, intro 845 to limit light pollution from street lights. Uh, thank you, and uh, I motion to adjourn. Thank you, Council Member Kalos, uh, again for joining me on, uh, regarding that comprehensive study regarding on-site child care to city employees. And now the speaker to close. Uh, I am uh, seconding Council Member Kalos's motion to adjourn. Good night and good luck. Thank we you. We stand adjourned.